when you go into the hall, you, you know, uh, have to have your cap, right? You, or back in the day, that's the way they used to do it. We all know which team you'd go, you, you'd put on your cap. Right. Would you go in as a starter or reliever if you had a choice? I would, I would love to go in as a starter. That, that's, that's really what every pitcher that, at least for me, that's always what I wanted to do. The, the postseason was the most important for me. Um, being a closer was something I did to help the team out, um, and I learned how to do it. But no doubt, I, I love taking the ball in the first inning and uh, giving it up uh, after the ninth inning and the last out was made. John Smoltz joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show from the American Century Championship at Edgewood Tahoe Golf Club. And uh, you told the Daily News, uh, John, that you thought that the current Met staff, quote unquote, they're way better. They have more talent than we could ever have. And again, you're referring to uh, your your uh, golf mates and starting mates from back in the day. I'd love to give you a the, the, uh, little bit of time to expound on that. Yeah, I mean, they have a disadvantage that we never faced. They're in a do it now. What can you do for me? I mean, they haven't had a chance to really develop. Their stuff is phenomenal. I mean, they got power arms up and down the rotation. There's not really many compared to other than the nationals. And what we did, we, we were able to do for a long time. We spent a lot of time in the minors. Of course, we didn't pitch under the theories that exist today. We got our brains beat in. We learned how to pitch. Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin each lost over 15 games first year. and They went on to win 300 games. My, my fear for these guys is with the rapid rate of which we are asking guys to do things and the rapid rate at which they're tacking that RPM and velocity is how long will they be able to do this, you know, this great special talent that they have. By far, uh, way more talent than we did. We pitched, obviously, a long time, and we did it for a long time. Financially, it was able to work. I don't think that will work in today's day and age. I love watching them throw. That's the best compliment I can give them. Um, Jacob DeGrom, of course, Matt Harvey and Steven Matz and Wheeler, who reminds, reminds me more of, of me than, than, than does the others. And, and they just have the, the unique capability of not only shutting down a lineup, but uh, it, it doesn't matter who throws. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a sign of a great staff. So who's the most talented out of the bunch? And I think that that's a compliment to all of them that I would even be able to ask that question with what Matt Harvey uh, did in the first couple of years of his career. Who, who would you say is the most talented out of that Mets bunch? You know, that's an interesting question, and, and it always changes a little bit based on the circumstances. I mean, Matt Harvey's got the ultimate weapons, and it almost seems like, uh, the perfect uh, scenario. I, I got a. I'm. This is. It's a tough question. I love Jacob Degrom. I, I think what he has is hard to teach. He's got arm side control, which means his fastball into a righty, away to a lefty. He, he just went in and dominated the uh, All Star game in ten pitches. But they all have that. You know, that would be like. Um, you know, you can't have a wrong answer. Uh, but I really do like Jacob Degrom. Uh, it's like one A, one A plus, and uh, mm. what they've got just mainly because I haven't seen that kind of arm and, and, and action in a while. What Matt Harvey has, he has the complete package. Um, and that would probably lean most people and myself to even say that would be the answer to the most talented. But it, it's a good problem to have. Uh, I think the hardest thing the Mets are going to deal with is when do they make that trigger move and what do they do to enhance their chances, uh, not only this year, I think, in a, in a patient world that we don't live in. If, if, if they were patient and could just ride this thing out next year, they are odds on favor to, uh, to be that team, you know, to be the Washington Nationals. Um, but that means getting creative and finding some offense other than losing one of your stars to do it. John Smoltz of MLB Network and soon to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame joining me here. A couple more questions for you. Uh, have you worked on your speech? What, what, how does that speech look in? Right now, you know, I, I wrote it like five, six different times. I thought it, I thought I nailed it the first time. I was really going, "All oh, right, I got it. It's mm -hmm. over with." And I read it, and I'm like, "Nah." nah and I wrote it again, and on the plane trip down here, spent two hours rewriting it again. And and, and as fate would have it, when we landed, mm -hmm. it hit me. I'm making this way too hard. <laughs> I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to. I'm basically going to have these short statements of defining who I am. I'm going to have fun. I got a couple fun things in, uh, in, in play for the, if I have enough guts to pull it off at the mm -hmm. podium. And uh, of course I'm going to get my teammates back. So uh, I'm looking forward to the whole event. I've just been trying to make it too hard and too perfect. And anytime you try to do that, anytime you try to pitch a perfect game, 
Yeah. It usually never happens. Well, you know, John, if you need any help, you know, I'm a Michigan man uh, with my degree from the University of Michigan, you know, about a 3.435. Three um, you know, I'm a writer. I, I'll help you. I'll help you, John. That might be the first time a Wolverine is going to help a Spartan, though. No, that would be pretty cool. You know, I'm that type of guy, even though there is an I in Rich and Eisen, John. <laughs> I love it. Just that type of guy. Your last question for you. I know you're up against it. Who are you most concerned about in the Tahoe field for you to uh, oh, not Pete. win? You know, that, th this field, it, it, there's so many veteran presence here. Um, I've always I've loved playing with and against Billy Joe Tolliver. And, of course, what Mark Rippon did yet last year was unbelievable. Um, I matched up against uh, Mark Mulder, and he's one of the best golfers mm. that not a lot of people know about. Okay. And he absolutely peers a golf ball. So he's the guy. He's the young, perfect body, left-handed, uh, going to win this thing multiple times. So uh, as I'm 48, I, I got a few years left to try to sneak a, a win in before the window starts closing. Yeah, look out for Falk. Falk's got some game, too. John. He does. He's got like the perfect swing. So when you get out here, look, it's all about these, these greens and putting. It'll make you look like you've never played the game the way some of the breaks and the way the ball goes. So just got to be, I got to be a little more numb when it comes to the greens and uh, take what it gives. <laughs> You're too deep a thinker, John, whether it's come That's to the right. speech or standing over that putt. Come on, John, just turn it off. Just That's go for exactly it. exactly right. Okay, thanks for calling in, John. I appreciate you it. You got it. You All got right. it. You bet. That's John Smoltz. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.